welcome back. So excited to have you here. Today, we're going to be talking all about interventions for dyscalculia. So the first question that I get asked is, what's the difference usually between intervention and tutoring? And there is a ton of difference. Um, however, when people refer to the work we do, they're generally using the word tutoring, even though I don't use that word to describe what I do because they're vastly different. So let me just draw some contrast for you about the differences between math tutoring and math intervention. And the first thing is, is that math tutoring usually has to do with that homework help and staying afloat on that sinking ship. And I kind of think of it as, you're giving a student with a bucket with holes on a sinking ship and it's just barely getting them by, especially when the student has dyscalculia. It's student driven and school driven. You're just usually keeping up with what's going on at school and it's usually not effective at filling in that unfinished learning that's going on. And it's just trying to reinforce what's being taught at school. So it doesn't necessarily go backwards too much in the student's knowledge and make sure that we're filling in that unfinished learning. A teacher that's doing some math tutoring on the side might discover like, oh, this child doesn't have a very strong fractions basis or base, but, and they'll go backwards a little bit, but they typically don't go all the way back to where a student needs, which we are finding is usually at the beginning. They need help all the way back at the very beginning concepts of place value. So math tutoring is a band-aid solution when you have a student with math learning disabilities. How do you gauge that as far as like, does my child need tutoring or intervention? One quick, easy litmus test that you could use would be their grade. If they have, um, let's say a B, a B minus, and they're just trying to get to an A, tutoring is a great choice. Your child's getting enough in the instruction in their classroom. But if your child is getting below that and it's lots of tears, lots of frustration, our hours of doing homework, there's a sign right there for you. There's something more going on. So intervention on the other hand is intense. It's targeted, it's driven by assessment and it's using a very specific technique. We're using Marilyn Zecker's multi-sensory method and it has to be a special method. It's also building that solid foundation and it's efficient at going back and finishing the gaps in the unfinished learning work, going back and building up that stronger foundation because mathematics builds upon itself. So intervention is about going back and giving the right kind of instruction at the right point. So it's not about helping your child excel in their current math class. That's not an outcome you would get at Made for Math. It does happen eventually the students do start catching up in their current math classes, but we have to go back and do that foundational work. So what kind of interventions are best for students with dyscalculia? I just wanna caution that taking your child to somewhere like Kumon or Mathnasium is not going to work well for these students. Again, they're using the same kind of method and teaching that they're using at the schools. You need something drastically different. And a lot of those programs are based on rote memorization and spiral learning where you're going up. And we really have to be mindful about what is being memorized. Um, that's one of my favorite phrases I learned from Steve Chen, it's excellent. So math intervention needs to be simultaneous and multi-sensory using the visual, the auditory, the kinesthetic tactile. That doesn't mean we're talking about um, learning styles, because those have been debunked. We're talking about tapping into multiple ways of learning and engaging the brain to create access points and get the content in there. The math intervention also needs to be systematic and cumulative. It's building on itself. It's going in a specific order and it's direct instruction. We're not leading, letting children come to ahas on their own. We're directly telling them this is the procedure. This is how, this is why. It's really important that it's direct and explicit. It's diagnostic. We're not just guessing where the student is. We are figuring out where they are and starting there instead of picking a random spot. And then it's synthetic and analytic, meaning that we're going from the whole big picture. We can take 10 and break it down into two and eight, but we also are going from part two and eight to make 10. So we go from whole to part and part to whole. That's what we're doing. That's what kind of intervention 
should be done with a student with dyscalculia. So what programs and services are available? I know I've talked about these in other videos, but it's just worth mentioning again, we've got Marilyn Zecker, we're big fans, we're totally biased. Uh, there's Dr. Schroeder, she has some really cool geometry stuff, go check it out. Dr. Sharma has these morning classes that are free, definitely go check them out, my team's really enjoying his, his work. And then there's Dr. Steve Chin. He has a year-long training program that you could be part of. And Christopher Wooden has ongoing training as well, probably about every quarter, tied and tethered with Landmark. And then there's Making Math Real with David Berg, who now has online training available, which is really cool. Increases the access for everyone. So how do we find these people? Well, obviously, simple Google searches. I'll do my best to link up to them here for you as well. But also, if you're looking for someone that can do intervention, there's some key phrases. You could, yes, type in math intervention, dyscalculia intervention. But another phrase that would be more likely to pop up and give you more results would be multisensory math tutoring or dyscalculia tutoring. Again, because a lot of people don't understand the difference between tutoring and intervention, so they use the word tutoring more. And that, that would yield you results. And so if you add the phrase near me, you can find people that are close to you. At Made for Math, we do everything online. So location doesn't matter. We mail a giant box of materials to your house. Totally works. It's very rare when it doesn't work for a student to work online. And then what should you be looking for, parents, in an interventionist? Because some people say they're multisensory or that they could do that method, um, but they're not necessarily all in on it, right? They might be tutoring reading and writing and math. So that tells me they haven't dedicated as much time to learning and mastering the math side of intervention. So be, be on the lookout for that for someone that's wearing multiple hats. It's not that they couldn't help, it's that they haven't dead, has done as much training in that most likely. But look for someone who's using evidence-based research those kinds of things. They're using the stuff that we find here in Steve's book. Um, they're looking at websites like What Works Clearinghouse, which is a website that tells educators, these are the methods that have a strong likelihood to increase good outcomes for students. So they're looking at websites like that. Um, they have that specific trainer with some of those people that I mentioned, like Marilyn or Dr. Schroeder or Dr. Sharma, or any of those people. Um, and one good question you could ask these people when you're thinking about hiring them is, have you heard of these people? Um, have you gotten any training from them? Have you read any of their books? And then you could ask, you know, people that you're looking for, if they're well versed in specialized math instruction or multi-sensory math instruction, both in the content and the approach. Don't be afraid to ask, ask these people. Um, we want them to be invested in learning these things. Remediating dyscalculia, doing intervention for it is really difficult work and you want someone that's really dedicated to it. And then the lastly, if you're an educator and you're watching, what can you do to provide better intervention or I, RTI for students with dyscalculia? And obviously, I can't recommend enough getting training from the people that we've mentioned. Marilyn Zecker does a lot of things with schools, so don't be afraid to push your admin to invite Marilyn to either come out to your school or pay for the training for your RTI team, your special ed team. But really, all math educators would benefit from going through her training. So she has multiple options if you want to check those out. And so do several of the others that I've mentioned. Um, but these are the methods that are just the basis of good teaching. And any educator can benefit from investing in the training that I've been talking about today. So that's how we uh, look for interventionists or what you should be on the lookout for. If you have questions, please ask for that. All the links are down below here in this video to help make it easier for you to find the right fit for your child. And then as usual, we gotta end with a joke. All right, this is from Tim the Right Triangle on Instagram. What's wrong with him? He's having an exponential crisis. Get it? Instead of existential, he's having an exponential crisis. It's bad, it's bad. That didn't say it would be good. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya.